if you are an elementary art teacher and you've been tasked with making a Canvas page for your classes, it's a learning management system called Canvas, you are in for a lot. It's a lot, especially as the elementary art teacher or any specials teacher, you usually have like 20 to 30 classes and sometimes your school will put a Canvas course per class which is crazy. My school puts a Canvas course per grade level, so I have eight different Canvas courses for each of my grade levels, K through six. Actually, no, that's only seven. I have preschool, but preschool doesn't have Canvas, so I have seven different Canvas courses, and that's still a lot. So if you do have Canvas and you're going to use Canvas, or you're told you have to use Canvas, Try to ask your IT people or your district if you can combine all of your courses into one course where all of the students can go to it. Because I'm gonna show you how I use Canvas as an elementary art teacher. So right now I have empty courses, K through six. I don't know where the kindergarten one went because it's a K. Oh, there it is, alphabetical order. Um, it has nothing in them because I have not updated them and I had just asked my district people to combine my courses so I can just make one course again. So I have nothing in there. But my past enrollments down here, I've been using Canvas. I think this will be my fourth year using Canvas or third year. Fourth year? Third year? I don't know. It's been three or four years. So the first year we had to use it because of online learning and it was helpful. But now that we're back in person, it's not the most helpful and it's not user friendly, but we have to use it. So you just got to do it. So the past thing I had, I had courses. I'm going to show you my combo class. So when I click on what I had last year, this is what my homepage looks like. I'm not going to show you how to make a homepage or how to make these things. I just want to show you how I use it. So at first I had all of my courses had the same homepage. I had seven courses, same homepage. And every month or every so often I'd have to update every homepage the same way over and over and over seven times. If I added a newsletter, I'd have to do it for all the rest of the courses. And that was obnoxious. So second semester I had them combine it into one and I'm so happy they did. And I'll show you what I have. So first I had a banner, which said, this is art class. This is what the students would click on and see right away. And then we did have one online learning day because of a uh, road closure. So I did put a Zoom link in my Canvas page. That was always just in case of bad weather. I had some kids show up to it, most did not. And then more specifically, I put a button that goes to each grade level that has its own page instead of course. So instead of having a course per grade, I have a page per grade because all of my students can get to this single course, which has been very helpful. It's also populated through Power Teacher, so I don't actually have to put the students in here. They're already in here, but I am very lucky that they agreed that I could have one course instead of seven. I would add a button or a link to Artsonia, the reward system I do, and then a early finisher activities which we rarely used, but it was there in case I wanted to show what they could do when they were done. I have my art class motto, and then I would add a newsletter on the bottom. Each month I make a newsletter and I put the image on the bottom so kids can see that right away if they did go to my homepage. In the modules, I would add um, different resources. So the last one I had was clay resources. All the newsletters are here so kids or their parents could go find them in Canvas and then basic information for the art class, like expectations, my grading rubric, the standards, that kind of stuff. I'll go back to the homepage. And I'm gonna to go to student view, just so you can see what a student sees. Usually I just had home and modules, but with some like updates, sometimes they add random things here and I have to take those away because my students don't need to click on that. Home and modules is all I had. Homepage, Zoom link, banner, grade levels, all this stuff. If I was a fifth grader, I would click on fifth grade. And in each page, I will have all my learning targets for each week. So the kids or myself, if I forget, 
can go back and see what we did like three weeks ago. Sometimes I'd add pictures or links, things that the kids can go to. If I was having them follow along, they could actually click on some resources or an image, or I could just zoom in and be like, hey, look at this image. And then on the bottom, I tried to do um, the art gallery for the grade level and each grade level. I didn't get to a lot, but this is some of it. So if I go back, I know like in first grade, I didn't add any gallery images because it was second semester. I was pretty tired out and it's okay. Our work coming soon and never came soon. But maybe this year I'm going to try to do the pretty much the exact same thing. I'm going to have my learning targets weekly that go up and up and up. They start on the bottom and then I just keep adding as the weeks go on. And it's easy when I'm presenting or sharing. If they're following along on their iPad, a lot of time they weren't. But I could just go here, click on this, and go to the resource or the web page that I want them to see. So that was kind of nice. So instead of actually having a bunch of resources in the modules, I just kind of added links to the uh, learning targets. Okay, I'll go back to the home page. What else do I have? So this is a link to Artsonia because I do not have the kids turn things in on Canvas. Since it's a whole school page, if I created an assignment and had them turn it in, it would it would go to every grade level's um, uh, like turn in. Like it'll say, hey, you have an assignment for art, turn it in. But I only want second grade to do it, but it'll go to everyone. So I don't have assignments that I have kids turn in on Canvas. I just have them turn it in on Artsonia. Plus, I can see them in person, and I can see what they're doing, and I can check it off. There's really no purpose of having them turn in stuff on Canvas, for art class at least. It just takes a long, a lot of time, too. I had my reward system that if they clicked on that, they could see. I gave them art coupons, and then there's, like, stickers and stuff, so they could see that from Canvas. And then I did have a page that was a finished early finisher ideas Kids would rarely actually go to this, but if I needed to like show them, there are ideas. If you have 10 minutes, there are some things you could do. So I have that on my page. And I think that's pretty much it. That's how I use Canvas. It's kind of just like a backup of what we're doing and to show what's going on. Um, yeah, and then next time I have to show how to use Canvas because I'm actually going to pull this page into my new Canvas page so I don't have to restart. I might do a new banner. I do like these grade level buttons because I do organize my grade levels by color. And I just made these in Keynote and saved them as images and plopped them in here, added links to them to different pages. Um, and then I'll probably keep this, I'll, I'll change this. I don't need to have this motto in here, but I do like having the newsletter down here. So once I do have all my Canvas courses combined, I will be remaking pretty much the same kind of concept. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have questions, let me know. If you need some help, maybe I could help you too. Who knows? I also want to show you how I used Canvas my very first year of using it because this is when we actually used it for online learning and kids would turn things in. So this is my homepage in 2020, 2021 year, 2021, 2022, whatever first year I used it when we were all home online learning. So each grade level had a page and I did not combine them that year. So this is the fourth grade class. So I had fourth grade art banner. When they clicked on their dashboard and they came to my class, this is what they'd see on their iPads. I had the Zoom link because we would go to zoom once a week and I put the date. I had student art button, art books, art news to my newsletters. Um, I think I had a bonus art zoom, so I let them go there and I don't, where did that go to? I might've deleted the page too. Oh, man, yeah, been deleted. That's okay. Well, that's what I had. And then I had a, the prize vault sticker, like prizes. I made these buttons in Keynote still. I have a, a Bitmoji extension on my computer that I, you know, copy and paste Bitmojis and then put them in little color backgrounds and save them as images. I still do that a lot and I think it's very fun. 
So this is what I had on my Canvas page. And then I had my learning targets and objectives or what we're doing uh, listed out each week down here in a little more detail too. So I would have uh, like the what lesson number, the supplies you'll need, how to turn it in and when to turn it in, plus a little picture on the side. And I think if you click on the picture on the side, it'll take you to the actual assignment. Like here I had all the assignments um, and I would number them by number. That assignment apparently had been deleted, but that's okay. So if this was assignment number nine, click on it and it would bring you to the whole assignments page and you find number nine. I don't do that anymore because we don't turn in assignments on here, but it's still the, the same concept with me adding the learning targets or what we're doing um, to these to the home page instead of actually clicking into another button, then they can just see exactly what we're doing. So I believe this was just like the first week of school or the first quarter of school, the first nine weeks. Um, and on the bottom, I had a, a grade, how art class is graded. So plus one, they joined Zoom. It's out of four. So these would be the grades. And that's, that's how I did it during online learning. Now I just have it different, but um, yeah, it's still, still kind of the same idea, different things. And I know when I click on these, it like the pages have been deleted. Oh, art books. This was fun because I actually scanned in a bunch of art books and then I had like YouTube channel ideas and drawing prompts and I put PDFs on there. So if they needed some more ideas, they can easily go to like the art books or resources page. And I know these are PDFs. So when they click on them, it turns into a PDF on their iPad, but now I'm actually downloading this whole book. So I actually made these PDFs not to give to people because it would be like as if they were in my class and I had this book for them to look at, but since they're at home, they can't look at it. So I wanted to give them the option to see some like how to draw books without buying their own because this is already in my classroom. So I just, I turned it into a PDF. And then I'll go back to, oh, um, oh yeah, this was at the end of the year, this was the home page. So go to the virtual art show and I had a little thing here. So that was how I did it my first year. And now that we're back in person, it's mostly different.